here. Hello, fellow gamers. Welcome back to my channel. And you may be asking yourself, why are you dressed like a pirate? I'm not really a pirate. A privateer. And talking like Batman. Well, today I'm going to be opening up a game that you're just going to love. It is just, it's such a game. And it has everything to do with not pirates. Today we're going to be opening Fallout the board game. Yes, only two years late, but I am opening it up now. This is going to be really exciting. Honey, this isn't even funny. Why do you make me do this stuff? You know, they were quite happy with the way the video was turning out. All right, welcome back to my 5% uh, viewers. It's gone up from 2%, so not too bad. We're unboxing Fallout today. I'm sure you've already seen this, but let's look at it again. Uh, this is a game, a post-nuclear board game for one to four players. And it's by Fantasy Flight Games and these guys. So let's open it up, take a look at the back. It's got some minis in it that I hear are very well uh, made. They're good detail and everything. It looks so uh, in the picture right here. It has some very neat, unique player boards as well. Now there has been some bad things said about this game because it's got a strange kind of ending. As soon as the faction level drops to a certain point, then, or you get enough reputation, you win and the game kind of stops abruptly. But I don't, for me, I don't see a problem with this. It's the same kind of idea that they did with Outer Rim. Uh, Outer Rim is the same thing. You play until you have you know, 10 or 12 reputation, and whoever gets 10 or 12 reputation first wins the game. And then it just stops. So, you know, this I don't, I don't necessarily feel like these need a grand conclusion. Some games don't need a grand conclusion. Uh, but the other issue is that this is non-cooperative at the moment. The New California expansion, which I'll be receiving tomorrow, and I'll be doing a, an opening uh, unboxing on, has a scenario that is cooperative. And they are releasing in August a uh, card pack, which makes the game fully cooperative. So it's going to save the game. So I suggest you go out and pick this up because uh, this is a this is you know a fun game. And uh, since they're going to fix it, you might as well get it. And right now there's some pretty good prices. I actually picked this up on eBay for 20 bucks. So, not too bad. All right, we're going to go over our plastic wrap here. My favorite part. And, of course, I enjoy most all Fantasy Flight games. All right, we have our usual Learn to Play and Rules reference, like they always do. We have our 50s art, which I love. Very cool. Go ahead and say it. They can scream at me in the comments. Okay, Boomer. Well, I was born in 64, so I was the last of the Boomers. So, not too old yet. And, okay, we got that. Got the art. We got 15 pages, not too bad. And I hear it's a fairly simple game to learn. So, we'll check it out. Here we have the punch outs. With, of course, the Nuka-Cola uh, and some of the letters for the, the player boards itself. We're going to check that out in a second. Never please stand by. And the usual channel fantasy flight situation. We've got one, two, three packs of cards. Looks like our, our uh, yeah, these are like our missions, objectives, whatever you want to call them. Got some dice and little pegs. The usual fantasy flight pegs, it's probably to put the player boards together. So let's open these up here and take a look and see what we got. Ah, more plastic wrap. My favorite, favorite, favorite. All right, these as usual. Fantasy flight does a great job with components and a great job with. The punch outs and they're always ready to fall out so these are great they look really cool of course you have your opposite side where you don't know and once you reach the player edge you reveal a tile so this is uh, in that perspective this is a little like um, the uh, dungeon of the mad mage or any of the dungeons and dragons games where you have to go to the edge of the tile to reveal the next tile there we go we have our nuka cola and our values one dollar five dollar this is the money of the game 
All right, here's our next one. And here's more of our letters to spell out the special for our attributes, attributes, abilities, however you like to call them. Okay, we're looking at this side again. You have the, where you don't know exactly, and of course our little funny face guy. Here we have some of the monster tokens and some other tokens here that uh, also go to the player board that give you some special so this one, I believe, is for health, for uh, full night's rest, full rest. You get that token that gives you a special ability. Yes, and yes, indeed, these are our monsters. And they're pretty cool. I like the art. I would have, uh, you know, I know it's expensive to do a lot of managers and it would have raised the price of this, but it would have been nice if the monsters were you know, had miniatures too, but it's okay. This is just like... Uh, well, not just like, like Gloomhaven has the miniatures and the monsters are standees. These aren't necessarily, necessarily standees and they're probably, yeah, these are too thick to put in the Fantasy Flight standees. Well, they may fit. It's possible. You may be able to, once you flip them over, you can stand them up. But, you know, it's really not necessary. This is very cool. The tiles are very nice. As usual, the artwork is great. Here's looks like our player boards. There's the special. These go together with those little, those little dotty tab things here. These are used for a lot of, a lot of their games, including X-Wing, especially X-Wing and Armada. So we got these little punch outs there. We got our, we got our Happy Man. I'm not 100% familiar with the, the video game. I did not play it, but uh, I love the idea of the Cedar Performer. I got that. I love the idea of this post-apocalyptic uh, post apocalyptic style game. So I picked it up. And of course, yeah, these are the player boards, or part of the player boards, so you have to build them up. Yeah, we're a little happy guy. And let's see here, take a look here real quick. Yeah, you can see here where it shows how to snap them together, the player boards. All right, let's take a look. We got our cards here. Let's see what we got for cards. We have loot cards, we have asset cards, unique cards, agenda cards, quest cards. So this is what these are here. Got some quest cards here, which I won't reveal because it's just going to tell you all the quests. We have settlement cards. These are going to be mixed in. We have to figure out. These are in some kind of special order, so I don't want to mess them up at all. They're all varying numbers. This one's from 73 to 159. And then we have more cards here. And here we go, starting from number 1 to 72. And then we have a few extra of the settlement cards here. All right, we have the the vault and the encounter, the quest cards. We got wasteland. We got settlement. So it's all here, all numbered. So there's a hundred quest cards, but then you have to add the other ones in there. So in total, we have 159 cards that give us all kinds of information on exactly how things play out. We have some extra settlement cards here. Yeah, no, so that's all. Some of settlement and some of the wasteland cards are here. So it's going to be fun trying to figure out what these are. I don't want to spoil these too much, but we can see here how the card breaks down. And they probably you probably read part of it and maybe refer to another card. Do whatever it says, you know. And I'm sure this is somehow similar to the way Arkham Horror 3rd Edition is now, where you have your archive and you lay the cards out into your codex and they tell the story i don't know how much the story this is but we will see when we get some pleasure here okay all right we got the small cards now these are your perk cards where you get some little perks for different things that you do throughout the game you have your players the characters, you got a ghoul, 
We got a super mutant. We got a vault dweller. We got a wastelander. We got a brotherhood outcast. So those are the these are the guys. These are your unique assets. We can look at some of these. See what we got here. We got some power armor, minigun, alien blaster. We got the fat man. Super Sledge, Shish Kebab, Wasteland Survival Guy, Pip Boys, these are different things, and they all give you, ooh, dog meat. Okay, exhaust before a fight to ignore all ability icons on the enemy. If you have an aid item, keep this companion when it on exhaust. So these all give you different little, little goodies. We have our loot cards. Let's take a look at those. We got the iBot, and then this again just gives you some more stuff that lets you have some little extras here. Exhaust to explore an adjacent tile. Yeah, so this gives you just extra things you can do in the wasteland. Oh, ooh, day tripping. Ooh, very nice. Psycho. This full of caps. Immediately discard this card and gain three caps. Okay. Which is your money. All right. Then we have asset cards. And again, these also give you, so there's a different deck, three different decks that give you some things. And then last we have the agenda cards. Of course, I don't wanna spoil these. So you can see they all have different things that you need to do and take care of in the game. Now next we have here are the, the four scenario cards. And of course they tell you what's in the scenario here. This is where faction movement takes place. And then you get one color gets to the end and then yeah, the game stops. Or when somebody gets enough influence, then uh, the game is over. And here of course is your board set up for each scenario. Now this comes with four. And New California comes with two more. And then let's take a look at our little dice here. We got the pegs. We got the little, I'm sure we'll, you're familiar with these fantasy flight things here. We have the pegs just like Outer Rim. Or should I say Outer Rim has the pegs just like this because this came out before. All right, little standard dice, except they have their little body parts. And these are going to be how you damage your opponent. You have to roll a certain, they have certain body parts marked. And then uh, you have to roll that. And then, of course, these represent the damage they do to you. Now let's take a look at our figures. Now these are these are really nice. I have to admit, I'm taking a look at it myself first, but take a look here. Take a look at that. That the detail in here is really, really cool. This is gonna be great to paint up, or if you don't paint, just leave it like this because they're really, really cool minis. They look fantastic. There you go, check it out. Very cool. I love how that's done. Got the triple barrel gun there. There you go again. Like I said, the, even the faces have expression on them. So they really did a standout job for these things. Well, this guy's really cool. Take a look at that. Love that gun. And he has the Fallout mask on, of course. Everything looks very, very nice in here. And then last, looks like that's probably our zombie dude. That's some kind of, that could be the alien ray gun. I have to check and see if any of these guns match up with any of the cards. Let's see what they have. All right, so that's it. Uh, you're looking good, so we're gonna I'm gonna pop it out, put it together, learn how to play it. And like I mentioned before, the Atomic Bonds is the next uh, expansion for this game. So uh, check it out because it does make it cooperative. That's all I got for today. Thank you to my five percent viewers and the rest of you who quit watching after the first two seconds.
You guys have a great day. Hey guys, I wanted to uh, tack this on the end of the video so we can talk a little bit more about the Fallout Atomic Bonds Cooperative Upgrade Pack that's coming out in August. This is a $15.99, I believe. You can order it from the Fantasy Flight Store or you can uh, pre-order it from uh, Cool Stuff, Game Nerds, uh, Miniature Market, or wherever it is you pre-order stuff from. This should have gotten out before all the virus stuff. I know some stuff hasn't been listed yet on the uh, FLGS's websites, so um, we'll see. But this should be up, though. This should be up. All right, let's take a look more at it here. We have uh, Atomic Bonds. Uh, the number of scenarios available to, available to you just doubled. This upgrade pack has everything you need to play every competitive scenario from Fallout the Board Game and New California Expansion as a co cooperative scenario. Rather than struggling against each other, Atomic Bonds lets you and your friends travel the wasteland, grab the best gear, and push your chosen faction to victory together. Combine that with the new addition of modifications, mutations, and workshop upgrades, the Atomic Bonds pushes your game of Fallout to dizzy new heights. As a cooperative upgrade pack, it is safe to say that cooperation is integral to the content of Atomic Bonds. In fact, this expansion takes the game's previously released competitive scenarios, whether from Fallout the Board Game or New California, and transforms them each and transforms each of them into two fully cooperative scenarios. Now this says two fully cooperative scenarios, each of them. Uh, I think that's uh, this says something different in the, the in the live stream, but we'll see. Let's see what happens when we get it. Each of the game's competitive scenarios, two warring factions are matched against each other. This could be the Enclave versus the Brotherhood of Steel, the Railroad versus the Institute, or another iconic pairing. When you're cooperating with your friends, however, you'll choose your side at the beginning of the game by picking one side of the double-sided scenario sheet. Not only does this change which faction you've aligned yourself with, it promises to dramatically change your gameplay experience and set your party on a unique path. Since you're all actually friends now, you'll be able to help each other survive. Whether you're assisting in the combat by firing from afar or setting up camps for you and other players to fast travel between, it's perfectly apparent that teamwork makes dream work. Uh, what do we else we got here? Corporate scenarios aren't the only change offered by Atomic Bonds. You'll now have the power to radically change your weapons, your apparel, your workshop, and yes, even yourself. Modifications, mutations, and workshop upgrades are three new types of cards, all offering new perks and powers you and your fellow for you and your fellow players. This is really great because they have some. Uh, I, I like the mutations. I, I looked in a little bit more about that. So mutations are, are great, but they, they do have a positive and they do have a negative side. And then there's some stuff here, especially what I like is the uh, chem lab here that can get rid of. The addiction and they have a rad lab that helps you get rid of uh, radiation which is very good so when you find a camp you can attach chem lab to it and here's chem lab right here any camp token spend three caps to lose addicted then resolve the effect of another lab upgrade that you have not used this turn without spending any caps so that's going to be cool the next we have uh the up uh, weapons upgrade you may tweak your weapon to be two shot here we go. After you perform a fight action, you may perform a second fight action for free. That I really like, especially when you're getting up some of those, you know, I have the right here. Some of these guys are really, really powerful, especially when you first start out. And I haven't really fully played yet, but uh, we have some, we have some really powerful guys here. Valley Hunter Looter. Radar scum. Anyway, I mean, I'm sure you know because you guys have been playing a lot longer than I have. So anyway, but they do have they do have some serious super mutant brute here, which is level three, and super mutant skirmisher, which is also level three. And if you don't hit them just right, they're not going anywhere. You gotta still face them again because it's not you know you can't build up. You know, for those of you who've never played or are looking to play, you can't build up uh hit points against them like if you hit them for two points you can't put the two points and then next turn hit them for one point and they're out now you've got to hit them three and all and that's it okay next we have okay or after taking enough rads you may suddenly become marsupial giving you additional cards for your inventory but negating your intelligence during the test so you can take a look at the card here and it says you can have two additional cards in your inventory 
which is the positive, and the negative of this is you are treated as not having intelligence during your test. So all these, all these uh, mutations are going to, you know, they're going to be good, but then they're not going to be so good. Okay. So I think this is going to be really great for the game. It's going to be great for cooperative. I've just started playing myself. Um, I've been trying to play a solo with four players, which is, you know, I know you, you got to look at the cards and there's supposed to be cards you can't see, et cetera, et cetera. But I go ahead and do it anyway. It's my game and, you know, play however I want to play. But this is really going to be great addition to it. And it's going to make playing with, with four, even by yourself, um, fun. It's going to be amazing. So I'm really looking forward to it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. And uh, get on there and pre-order this. Let's play some more Fallout.